Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode, where in this video we're going to learn how to configure nginx with nginx.conf, the structure of nginx.conf, what nginx contexts are, including an overview of the global, events, HTTP, mail, and server contexts, what nginx directives are, and how to reload nginx with a new configuration. So, the main configuration file for nginx is called nginx.conf. The location of this file varies depending on how nginx was installed. For this series, it will be located inside -etc-nginx-nginx.conf. We can print the contents of this file using cat-etc-nginx-nginx.conf. And your output should be similar to the following. Let me scroll to the top. And right off the bat, note that all these pound symbols are comments, such as this here, this here. But the first thing we should talk about is nginx directives. So nginx configuration consists of contexts and directives. A directive is a key value pair that determines the configurations to apply. For example, at the top of this file, we see the directive user and then www-data. We can also see the directive worker processes auto. Here, the key is worker processes and the value is auto. Here, the key is user and the value is www data. These directives are grouped into blocks known as contexts. So from looking at the contents of nginx.com, it is clear that the file is organized in a hierarchical fashion using brackets. For example, we can see some brackets here, such as events. Then we can see HTTP, a bracket, which encloses all this. And then down here, when we can see some hierarchical contexts, is with the mail directive. For example, we can see mail, then some directives, and then nested within mail, we can see the word server, and then some brackets, and some more directives. So within Nginx, these bracketed areas are called contexts. So this here is a context. This mail here, all the way to the bottom, is a context. Currently in this file, we can see four contexts present. Events, which is at the very top, this context here, HTTP, right here, starting here, down to here, mail, starting here to the bottom of the file, and then server, which we have multiple of, one here, and then one here. These contexts contain configuration information for specific areas, allowing for Nginx's configuration to be organized. Contexts can also be nested, as seen with the two server contexts here, nested inside the mail context. And now at the very top of our page, we can see these following directives outside of any context. These directives are in what is known as the global context, and they specify the core functionality of Nginx. For example, in the configuration file, we can see these four directives, user www data, worker processes auto, pid dash run dash Nginx dot pid, and include dash etc, the rest of this. An example of what these do is user specifies the user to run the worker processes as, worker processes specifies the number of worker processes, PID specifies the file to save the master process PID to, and include just includes another file. Now let's talk about the Nginx events context. So the events context is captured between brackets following the word events. Now there can only be one events context within an Nginx configuration and the events context is used for connection processing, because remember, Nginx processes connections in an event-based way. By default, we can see the directives worker connections and multi-accept. The directive worker connections is the number of simultaneous connections a worker process can work with. The multi-accept directive determines whether a worker process can accept one new connection at a time. The multi-accept directive is off by default, meaning a worker process will accept one new connection at a time as opposed to all new connections at a time. And it's off because we can see it commented out and it's off by default. And it is recommended to keep the default value of off. But these are just examples of directives that impact connection processing in the event context. Next is the Nginx HTTP context. The HTTP context goes between curly braces following the word HTTP, such as here. The HTTP context houses directives that handle HTTP and HTTPS traffic. This context will hold the majority of configuration when using Nginx as a web server or reverse proxy. As we will see later, the server context is usually nested within the HTTP context, 
and provides more specific details on handling HTTP requests. Directives only listed inside the HTTP context, so not nested within something else, are usually more global settings. For example, we can use the HTTP context to optimize serving content by working with packets, which is basically what it's doing here. We can configure the compression of data with gzip, which we can see here. We can set the path for error and access logs, which we can see here, and specify um, SSL settings, which we can see here, and all sorts of things similar to this. And now let's talk about the mail context. So the Nginx mail context, located at the bottom of the page here, uses the word mail followed by brackets. And we can see it's completely commented out. But the mail context is used to configure Nginx to behave as a mail proxy server. For example, Nginx can provide access to POP3 and IMAP mail service as seen in these nested server contexts. And now let's quickly talk about the Nginx server context. So the server context is nested within other contexts. It is the word server followed by brackets. And we can declare multiple server contexts within an HTTP context or a mail context, which we can see multiple here within this mail context. What the server context represents is a server. And more specifically, it represents a server at a particular IP address and port that handles client requests. These servers can be configured to handle subsets of client connections. We will go more in depth on this into these contexts as the series progresses. But now, let's edit nginx.conf and reload nginx with this new configuration. What we're going to do is remove the mail context from nginx by using nano, so sudo nano nginx.conf. And now, let's save this. And now let's reload nginx with this new configuration using sudo systemctl reload nginx. If we run sudo systemctl status nginx, nginx should be running fine still. Now let's introduce an error and reload nginx. So what we'll do is remove, remove a curly brace from the HTTP context and try reloading nginx with sudo, sudo systemctl reload nginx. And we can see the output saying that basically the system failed, or it failed because there was an error. So now let's run, so to check this, let's run sudo systemctl status nginx. And if we look closely, we can see a message saying HTTP has no opening curly brace, and then gives us the line in the nginx.conf file. So let's fix that error and reload nginx again with sudo systemctl reload nginx. And now we've successfully changed the configuration of nginx.conf. To be fair, we just removed some commented out information on the mail context, but this is a good place to start. But so there we have it. Configuring nginx is not that complicated, and nginx.conf is very structured and organized to make our lives easier. In the next video, we're going to be going on over some more nginx stuff, so be on the lookout for that. Besides that, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good one.